Hello and welcome to another edition of Controversial Thoughts with Carnivore MD. Most of the time recently, they seem to be about coronavirus because let's be honest, what else is there to really talk about right now? We're all stuck in our homes and can't go outside. Nature is closed. I can't surf. You can't hike. We can't go be outside in the sun. We can't hang out with our friends. So most of us are just getting a little bit antsy right now. I, I know you are. I am for sure. Anyway, the main controversial thought that I've been thinking about the last few days is what if we're wrong about this? What if we're wrong about the way that respiratory viruses function? What if we're wrong about whether social distancing is going to save lives in the long term? And I posted on Twitter and Instagram this morning about how tribalism is alive and well and how even calling into question things like vaccines, climate change, and coronavirus response, how many of you are triggered right now that I said vaccines and climate change, right? This is illustrating the point, are acts of treason, they're acts of hate, and they're acts of selfishness for most of the population because you are questioning, I am questioning, we are all questioning the status quo, which is a little bit ridiculous in my mind. I think there is a very real possibility that as some have suggested, and I will link and show a screen share of these videos and the paper written by Newt Witkowski, and there's a great video from John Ioannidis from Stanford as well that I'll show in this video, that what if coronavirus is going to behave like all other respiratory viruses and not go away until the majority of the population have actually been exposed to this. If that's the case, then we are potentially prolonging the amount of time that this virus will be in our population by doing social distancing. And yes, I understand there are benefits to social distancing in terms of not overwhelming the healthcare system. There are benefits to social distancing in giving us time to develop a response, a time to distribute personal protective equipment, I'm not saying there are no benefits to social distancing. What I am saying is that we should all be allowed to question this. And I continue to question and have concerns that maybe long-term social distancing is not the right answer. And certainly it's not going to work long-term. We cannot stay quarantined or our pseudo quarantine cannot last for another 18 months. That will completely topple world economies and politics. We know that is untenable. So what are we to do? And what will happen when we break the social quarantine, when we break the social distancing now? I think there's a reasonable possibility that the virus will start spreading again, just like all respiratory viruses will and do. Yes, we can see there is some flattening of the curve. Yes, there is a slowing down of infections. And we don't know why this is. This could A, B because, so not A, B, but it could A, comma, B because people are distancing and the virus has spread. It could also be, be because some of the population has been exposed and we're actually developing a little bit of herd immunity. I think it's probably A, I think it's probably the fact that we are not interacting with people as much that will slow the spread of respiratory virus. But is this whole notion predicated upon the opinion or the belief that the virus will suddenly go away in the summer or suddenly vanish out of the atmosphere? Because it's not going to. These viruses are around every year. What we know with common colds and coronaviruses and respiratory viruses is that these viruses mutate. Most of us are exposed every year. Some of us get symptoms, some of us don't. We may develop herd immunity. They tend to move through the population and then move out of the population. And then they mutate and they come back the next year, which brings up another very serious concern about a vaccine. Why are we convinced that a vaccine to SARS-CoV-2 is going to be effective year after year after year? Will this be like us chasing the flu virus every single year and not knowing how effective the vaccine is going to get, guessing whether the virus has mutated, how the virus has mutated every year? I don't think vaccines are going to be the answer many are touting them as. If you listen to Anthony Fauci, he would claim, in addition to saying that we should be not touching hands ever again or handshaking or hugging or kissing or doing anything else, that we are waiting for a vaccine and that quarantining and social distancing will need to be in effect intermittently until we have a vaccine. To me, this is a completely empty promise, and it misstakes how respiratory viruses function. They are probably going to have to circulate through the population in order for it to go away. It's not going to go away this summer. It may go down a little bit in the summer due to humidity and heat. We don't actually know. People do get colds in the summer, but it may not. And then it certainly may come back in the fall. There's a lot of debate over whether respiratory viruses, coronaviruses actually continue to circulate in warm weather. And on previous Controversial Thoughts with Car Carnivore MD. I have discussed how there's evidence that in tropical regions, things like the flu can circulate all year round. So if we're looking at a situation in which 
coronavirus probably isn't going anywhere and we are all social distancing, are we just delaying the inevitable? Are we just delaying it at the expense of economy, at the expense of social health, at the expense of mood and activity and us doing the things we like to do? Isn't it a possibility? I think it is. And it should not be a radical act of treason, hate, or selfishness to actually bring up that conversation. What we know is that this virus is in control. We are not in control. I went to the grocery store this morning and they would not let me into the grocery store without a mask. I didn't have a mask, so they let me put my shirt up here like this. I was a little bandito in the grocery store as I was going to get my grass-fed meat all morning. But it's almost as if we have become, we have believed, we have become to believe that we are in control or that we should hide from this virus or that we are going to be able to snuff this virus out if we can just social distance long enough, which is a fallacy in my opinion. The virus is in control. This virus is not going away and we are not going to be able to control it long term. We can put our finger in the dam temporarily and slow the spread, but as soon as social distancing stops, which it must, it will likely spread throughout the population all over again. And then what's next? More quarantines, more uh, economic ruin, economic damage. This is not a viable long-term strategy. We do need medications perhaps to treat those who are suffering most severely, but do we have medications to treat the flu? Mm, Tamiflu is not really that good. Do we have medications to treat a common cold? Nope. Uh, what we really are now doing is sort of temporizing so that we can understand how to treat those who are in the most dire straits in ICUs, which is a good thing, and redistributing PPE. But we should not fool ourselves into believing that we can wait this virus out. This virus will be a lot around after our quarantine. The virus is in control. We really just have to open the doors and face it and realize that as Newt Wiskowski is perhaps suggesting the healthy and the young will be the key to moving beyond this virus in terms of developing current immunity. So I'll screen share a couple of things that I've been thinking about to show you guys if you want to look at these resources. I found them to be pretty interesting over the last few days. There's a great video here from uh, stop the share. Let me see. Let's see if this works. A great video here from uh, perspectives on the pandemic, Journeyman Pictures. Uh, Dr. John Ioannidis, who is a, an MD, I believe at Stanford University. He was originally uh, widely publicized for calling into question the validity of our figures regarding fatality rates, which uh, I think many people are now questioning widely. And I think that every day it seems that the figures are adjusted down in terms of the projections of deaths, which is a good thing, but I think it's also potentially a, an estimation or a suggestion that we uh, have never had good numbers on this disease. Um, this is a great paper. This is from Newt Witkowski. There's a video of this on YouTube as well. In this paper and in the video on YouTube under Perspectives of the Pandemic, he discusses his ideas surrounding why social distancing might have been the wrong decision and why selective social distancing with protection of the old and the infirmed might have been a better thing to do uh, in terms of spreading herd immunity. There's a paper that I was reading, The Seasonality of Respiratory Viral Infections, which suggests that uh, temperature, humidity um, do perhaps affect viral stability and transmission rates. However, um, we cannot be assured of this in any way, shape, or form. So that's mostly what I've been thinking about. What if we're wrong? And at some point, we have to come out of our homes. And what happens then? But what if we're wrong about this? We've done it. I don't know that, that means we should undo it or how we undo it. I think that the, we've made our decision and we have to live with it now. And it's going to be challenging to understand how we move forward. But the virus is in control. We're not going to be able to outlast this virus. We're not going to be able to hide from this virus indefinitely. We're not going to have good therapy. And we're probably not going to have a vaccine that's that efficacious for more than one season. So I think that our whole perspective around this is potentially wrong. And those are my controversial thoughts. And I think that this goes back to more of an ancestral, uh, evolutionary, naturalistic approach where, look, if something comes for us, we face it and we do the best we can to stem the flow uh, of ill patients in very concentrated areas like New York. But overall, I think that we are not getting through this coronavirus thing unless we face it. We cannot hide from this much longer. Anyway, those are my controversial thoughts for today. Hope you guys find them useful. If you don't, I'm open to feedback because, hey, 
We're all just trying to think about this and contribute in a meaningful way. And we should not be subject to tribalism. There is no thought, there is no questioning that is treason, hate, or selfishness. We are all trying to move forward and protect ourselves, protect our families, and protect our fellow humans in the best way that we can. So hope you guys are doing good. Over and out.